Reading 42 from the Psychological Commentaries on the tre Teaching of Gurdjieff and Uspinski by Dr. Maurice Nichol, Volume 3. Kormid Ugle, August 17, 1946. On Awakening from Sleep. We are studying a system of ideas sometimes called esoteric Christianity, and which amongst ourselves we call the work. This system of ideas shows us quite definite lines upon which we have to work on ourselves, and all this work on ourselves depends on observing ourselves far more consciously than we ever do in life, and observing ourselves in certain definite directions laid down by the work. This work is based on the idea that we are not properly conscious as we are now, but that a quite definite increase of consciousness is possible through which we begin to evolve. Mankind at present, this work teaches, is not properly conscious, and only by an evolution of consciousness can it reach any desirable state. It also teaches that because man is not properly conscious, everything that happens in the world, all disasters, wars, and other evils, necessarily take place, simply because man is not properly conscious and does not know what he is doing or saying. Now, we are taught in this work that consciousness cannot develop unconsciously, but by effort. Mankind at present is used by nature, and so everything happens in the only way it can happen. But if man became more conscious, things would happen differently. In this work, we are told that a certain number of people can always become conscious at certain periods if they are willing to work on themselves and study how they are not conscious yet and how they can increase consciousness in themselves. And for this reason, the work begins with self-observation. A man must observe himself. He must notice himself, and gradually he must distinguish himself from this mechanical figure that he has hitherto been. By this personal work, he can attain a higher level of consciousness called in this system the level of self-consciousness, self-remembering or self-awareness. These levels of consciousness are indicated by the following diagram. As man is, he lives in this second so-called waking state in which everything happens in the only way it can happen by innumerable chains of cause and effect. An evolution of mankind is impossible in a general sense. One man can evolve and become more conscious, but humanity cannot do so unless each person works for an increase of consciousness. And such a thing is very unlikely, in fact, totally impossible for many reasons. The state of consciousness we seek to reach is the third state, the state of self-remembering. So it is said so often in this work that we must remember ourselves and that if we sincerely begin to try to remember ourselves, we will gradually be shown how to practice self-remembering at different moments and the different efforts needed. The first step, however, is to realize through the effort of long and critical self-observation that we do not remember ourselves and that, in fact, all the time we are in a state of sleep. In this state of sleep, we carry on our lives, we speak thousands of words a day, we make love, we write books, we kill one another. All is done in sleep. This is one of the first things we are told. The first mystery, so to speak, that the work teaches, the truth of which we have to realize for ourselves. Mankind is asleep. Yes, but you are asleep too. That is the point you have to see through your own uncritical self-observation. It is only when we begin to realize that we are asleep and that we are mechanical and not conscious beings that we begin to awaken. Very much is said in the New Testament about man being asleep and about the necessity of awakening. The word for awaken is unfortunately translated as watch. It should be awaken. Many words in the Gospels are wrongly translated as metania which does not mean repentance, but change of mind. 
change of the whole way of thought, such as a man undergoes when he realizes that the conscious circle of humanity exists, and that the kingdom, and that the idea of the kingdom of heaven is true. Another word that is wrongly translated is amartano, which is rendered as sin when it means missing the mark. The mark a man must aim at is the kingdom of heaven, and for this he must first reach a state of self-remembering. That is the third state of consciousness. He must aim at awakening, at becoming more conscious, at remembering himself, at being aware of himself. In my case, for example, I must be continually aware of Dr. Nicole and feel more and more something in me that is distinct from him and that lies more interiorly behind him. In this way, personality becomes passive and the essence is activated. Essence lies behind personality. The personality that life has formed in you is not you. It is not I, but it calls itself I. It says I to you, and you say I to it. This is sleep. In order to remember himself more and more deeply, a man must believe in the existence of greater mind, and he must begin to think psychologically apart from thinking literally. He must feel another reality of himself than that derived from life or parents. The Lord's Prayer begins with the raising of the whole meaning of oneself to another level of consciousness. Our Father which art in heaven. We must remember that this work teaches that essence comes down from a very high level in the descending ray of creation. That level in inner invisible space that is represented in outer visible space by the starry galaxy. As was indicated above, the teaching of a higher level of consciousness is not possible as long as the external world is taken as the sole reality. The first step is psychological understanding as distinct from literal understanding. In the parables that we have discussed so far, we have seen that they cannot be understood literally but have a psychological meaning apart from their literal sense. And just as art is not a physical fact, but an interpretation that is psychological and transmitted by the artist, so is all development to a higher level psychologically, something apart from physical fact with which the senses deal. In other words, psychological or spiritual development psychological or spiritual understanding is something abstracted from the literal facts of the senses. The inner development of man is not through the physical sciences and can never be unless the ultimate findings of physical science pass into spiritual meaning. It is psychological understanding that raises a man above the sensual level of the mind. In speaking of the meaning of what he taught, Christ said, it is the spirit that causeth to live. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words I speak unto you are spirit and will live. John 6 A man governed by his senses and believing only in the realities shown by his five senses and refusing to believe that he is anything else, anything above physical reality, a man who believes nature created itself accidentally, that the atom somehow or other naturally came into existence with its terrible chained forces. Such a man is dead in himself. He is dead psychologically, spiritually. Christ said that it was necessary for a man to enter into life. That means to enter into a form of understanding which is not based on the senses, into a spiritual understanding of himself and others. The power of the evident external world united to the power of science makes everyone think that the direction of man's development lies outside him in the investigation and control of matter. But if we study esoteric ideas in both the Old and the New Testaments, we find a quite contrary teaching. In the Old Testament, the passage of the children of Israel from Egypt is used as a type or image. St. Paul says, 
These things happen to them for types. 1 Corinthians 10 It represents the passage of man from a literal, sensual understanding to a psychological or spiritual understanding of his meaning. It is said in Isaiah 31, Egypt is flesh, not spirit. Egypt is man, not God, and his horses are flesh, not spirit. The horse is an ancient symbol for the intellect. Horses of flesh mean the intellect chained to the senses and believing only the evidence of the senses. We also find that a sensual man who follows only what he sees and is without any ideas which can develop psychological understanding is called a man who dies or is dead. This does not refer to physical death. It refers to the soul, to the psychological side of man. For a man can be psychologically dead and physically alive. It is said in Ezekiel, The soul that misseth the mark, it shall die. End quote. But the prophet adds that if a man turn from his mechanical way of behaving and tries to live according to what he has been taught, then he shall surely live, he shall not die. By going against himself, that is, against his soul, he shall find a new life in himself, a new meaning. Such a man will begin to live differently in the midst of life because he is no longer living just from himself, from his self-will, but living from a series of ideas that he has been taught and that have nothing to do with external life, but refer to the inner development of his own psychology to a higher level. So it is said that if a man who has been living anyhow and following his undeveloped soul, which nearly an animal, is the chief seed of his desire and self-love, if such a man will turn, then, quote, all his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. Ezekiel 18 God is made by the prophet to ask, Have I any pleasure at all? If the wicked should die, die spiritually, and not that he should return from his way and live? Ezekiel 18 All this is about awakening from sleep by going against one's mechanical behavior, mechanical thoughts and opinions, mechanical feelings, in the New Testament, the two kinds of men are mentioned. One is called the psychic man, that is, the man who follows his soul. This is the mechanical man, for the soul, unless opposed, does not grow, and remains the point of the most intense desire and self-love. The second kind of man is the spiritual, or pneumatic man, nevma. Christ speaks often about the necessity of, of being born of the Spirit and becoming the spiritual or nomadic man, a second man, within the man of flesh. For this reason, Christ says, quote, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man goes against his soul for his friends. John 15. This is rendered, quote, lay down his life, end quote, which does not include the full meaning. To go against one's soul is exactly what we have to do in this work. If you understand that this undeveloped soul is the seed of every mechanical desire, of vanity, pride, jealousy, and all the rest, you will then understand why the work opens on its practical side with the teaching that one must begin to go against mechanicalness in oneself. But it begins actually with self-observation, with observing what is mechanical in you, and if you do this sincerely, you will very soon realize that you are mechanical in the intellectual center, in the emotional center, and in the moving center, and in the instinctive center. We are, in short, a mass of habits. That is, we are simply machines. We say the same things over and over again. We react to events in the same way. We get angry in the same way. We become negative in the same way. All this keeps us in a state of sleep at the second level of consciousness. <laughs>